So, welcome to day one, day zero of the Transformers 4 countdown. And guess what? I saw the movie today, and oh my gosh, it was freaking amazing. It, it was just so cool. Um, yeah, this is going to be spoiler filled. So, um, if you haven't seen the movie, leave. But if you have, stay if you like. So let's start out. The main characters are Cade which is Mark Wahlberg, an inventor, Tessa, his daughter, and Shane, the daughter's secret boyfriend. And first off, let's talk about the plot. I really think I liked the plot. It was different. It was fresh. It was new. It was it was good. Sometimes it was all over the place, but I, that, I was okay with that. And yeah, it was a good plot. Now let's talk about the Autobots. So the main Autobots of this are Optimus, Bumblebee, Crosshairs, Hound and Drift, and they were really cool in this movie. I swear to you, my favorite one's probably Hound. They sweared a little, but still, it was funny though. Hound and Drift were my favorite ones. Well, you know, Bumblebee and Optimus and all that, and Crosshairs. But you know, that's that. And the, uh, this is there was a really brutal part in this, which I did not expect it to be this bad. I mean, brutal. It was where the humans were hunting down the ratchet and they were tearing him to pieces. Literally, his leg was blown off and he was begging for mercy. Then, guess what? Then you found out Lockdown's working with the humans and then Lockdown, guess what he did? He went right up to ratchet, grabbed his spark, and tore it out. Now, is that pretty brutal? Yes, I felt sorry for ratchet, but, you know, R.I.P. and all that stuff. And then... And then, yeah, there was Ratchet gone, and let's talk about Optimus in the movie. And, man, he was dark in this movie. I'm telling you, he was, like, vicious. He got, he was mad. You should have seen him when he, um, what's it called? When he saw Ratchet, like, that his head was melted for parts. He went insane. But finally, he gave some respect for some of his fallen Autobots. Well, he gave some, just some, but probably Ironhide off screen and pure not really actually and now let's talk about bumblebee he was cool he actually sweared a little bit but that was okay it's still your classic bumblebee that everybody knows and loves he was cool and hound was really cool i think i almost liked him better than ironhide he was funny he was big he really reminded me of bulkhead and yeah he was cool crosshairs i liked him and i liked him but i didn't know much about him in the movie, it just didn't express his personality. He was a little grumpy, but I'll say, uh, yeah, you know, he was cool, though. He was fun, and he had his nice trench coat, and now let's talk about Drift. He was awesome. He was funny. He really had an argument with Bumblebee, basically, and he said, he described Bumblebee as a child, and then Bu Bumblebee said, then through Bumblebee's radio, he said, this child's about to kick your butt, and... Uh, it was funny, and I like Drift. I think I really do like Drift. I hope he's in new. I hope he's in the future movies of Transformers. And let's get. Oh, Brains was also in this. He was captured after the Battle of Chicago, where him and Wheelie actually crashed the ship to save Bumblebee and the rest to catch you. Captured all of the Autobots in Battle of Chicago, and uh, basically he escaped that without really maybe. But, you know, we only R.I.P. And he was actually missing a leg, which was pretty, yeah, you know. It was bad, but, you know, it was, he was cool, though. He was funny. They, the KSI, the, I'll to get to that later, they captured him so he could help them with the human-made Transformers. But he eventually escaped the Hound. And he was hunting Hound's shoulder. He was funny, though. I liked him. Next off, we have... Let's see here. Who else do we have? We also have... What did I just see? Oh, yeah. Decepticons now. We're going to talk about the main villain, Lockdown. He was pretty cool, actually. He had a cool death, which I liked. But he basically wanted Optimus. He worked with the humans, of course, for the seed. I'll get to that later. But, um, what's it called? 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 Oh, yeah. He wanted Optimus. Because his creators, which I think were the sons, want to get him, want him back. And, yeah, that's why he came. He also captured Tessa by accident, basically. He had to. But, you know, that is that. So now we're going to get to... Oh, whoops. 
Now we're going to get to Galvatron, which is my favorite Decepticons movie. Well, we all know who Galvatron is. It's Megatron, basically, because basically what happened is the humans found Megatron's parts and built Galvatron out of them, but they found out that Megatron's mind was still in that, the parts, and it kind of took over it because Joshua, which is one of the builders in KSI, the designers, he kept saying, like, why isn't my Transformer turning out like Optimus? It's supposed to look like Optimus. Simple. Because Megatron didn't want it to look like that, so he changed it. So eventually, Megatron, I'm um, Galvatron, sorry, broke out of the fact you think, I am Galvatron. And broke out, just like in the Transformers 1. But, you know that, that movie. But, also, he was really cool. He had also had a fight with Optimus, which was insane. And Optimus grabbed his, uh, not grabbed, his swords in his arms. You know how he's got those ones that eject out? He stabbed it into Galvatron's spark, which he didn't have. It just got an orange hole, like a lava fire hole. And Optimus said, you have no soul. And then you know what Galvatron said? He said, that is why I have no fear. And it's actually awesome. It gave me chills. And Galvatron is actually voiced by Frank Welker, I think. Wait, was it Frank Welker? Or was it Hugo Weaving? Frank Welker, I think. Don't correct me. If, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But he did the voice of um, Megatron and Transformers Prime, too. And a bunch of other stuff, which is cool. And let's get the Stinger. Stinger was made... To be better than Bumblebee, basically. And he was pretty cool. He didn't talk at all because he was controlled by Galvatron, but he still had an epic fight with Strave, the Dinobot, and uh, Bumblebee. It was cool. He died, though, in an awesome way. Now, let's talk about the wolves. Lockdown's wolves. They were pretty cool. We actually see some flesh on them, so maybe they're like aliens that work for him. Who knows? Maybe we'll learn about that more in the next movie if there is. Probably there is. You know there is going to be. And next, we're going to talk about the Dinobots. So there are four Dinobots in this. There's Grimlock, Slug, Strave, and S Spike. They call them Spike, but in the toy line, they call them Scorn for some reason. But they were pretty cool. They didn't have much screen time. They had about 20 minutes, but it was still awesome, though. I love them. They transformed. They didn't talk, I don't think. They made noises, probably, but they didn't talk. But it was cool, though. I loved them, man. Felt like it came. they came a little late in the movie, but still, it was good. Next up, we're going to talk about the humans. So, the main human villain is a Tinger. I'm a Tinger? Is it a Tinger? Yeah, I think his name's a Tinger. That's his last name, probably. He's the whole mastermind behind the KSI Transformers project. And, basically, he was bad, basically, you know. And he, his, like, worker was Joshua, which is, you know, I told you that already. And he also had James Savoy. Who died, apparently, by Mark Wahlberg pushing him off a building, which is pretty cool. And they were pretty vicious people, but a Tinger died by Optimus getting so mad, he pulled out his gun and shot him. No blood or anything, I don't think. I didn't see it, but there's also this brutal scene that didn't last long, but it didn't even show him dying. It was Leadfoot, the target car, the wrecker from Transformers 3. He died, apparently, and he was one of my... I liked him, but that stinks, you know. He's an old bot. Um, so, let's do... The only thing I'm really wrong with in this movie is that the Dinobots didn't have enough screen time. That's my real issue. That's really it. And, uh, let's talk about the bad, brutal, another part. So, uh, yeah, this was a... There, it was a dark movie, but there was a brutal part where T.J. Miller, which is Mark Wahlberg's friend named Lucas... Mark Wahlberg's named Cade, by the way, in the movie, and... They were running from lockdown, and lockdown threw one of his bombs, and it hit Lucas, and he blew up, literally, and it showed his actual body covered in ashes, laying there dead standing. It was pretty bad, actually. Pretty cool, but brutal, so, yeah. And, what else, what else, what else? Really, all I have to say, really, but... The only, the ending was cool, but, um, Optimus left, because he thought he was endangering the world, and the seed, I forgot to cover the seed, the seed basically transforms the entire land of anything into Cybertronian, so Galvatron wanted that, so yeah, that's that, and, and there's also, Joshua sweared a lot in this, but he was funny though, and, 
Uh, what was it? 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 I'm trying to remember now. Oh yeah, the action sequences are really cool with them and the the um air battles, and it was really cool. Galvatron escaped in the end. He said, "He said, I am reborn. I will meet. We will meet again, Optimus Prime, or something." Then he wandered off. So maybe he'll be in Transformers Five. I hope so. And so the ending, Optimus left because he thought he was too dangerous for Earth, and he wanted to go get the seed. And find his creators. And hold on. Okay. And actually, the decept, the people that drove lockdown ship, the night ship, maybe the creators caused human extinction. I mean, dinosaur extinction. It was shown at the beginning, so that's a plot twist, all right. And Optimus left saying this really emotional speech, which was cool. It was really good, though. And he left. I'm gonna try to remember it all. He said, "Look at the." Yeah. He's a part of me. He said, look at the stars and imagine one of them is my soul. And he said, defend this family, Autobots, as they have you. And then he flew off. It was cool. And at the end, he said, um, I'm coming for you, for the creator, or something like that. So, that was cool. And what was really funny, Cade called Shane, which is Tess's boyfriend, um, Lucky Charms, because he was from Texas. But he had an Irish accent. So, that was pretty funny. So, overall... I think it was a really good movie. Action-packed. Everything. It was awesome. So I totally recommend it. But it is a little dark. I'll warn you of that. It gets a little brutal at some parts. But, you know, it's still worth it. I mean, it was awesome. So, yeah. Now it's time to wait till the new Transformers TV series based off Prime. I mean, the sequel to Prime called Robots in the Skies on July 4th. For the July, the sneak peek on the hub. Make sure you watch that. So, yeah, that's all I got to say for this review. So... Totally, I'm going to give this thing a 10 out of 10. I think it was, abs I don't know what it was. I think it was a little better than Darker the Moon action-wise. and Well, all of it-wise, I don't know. But I think it was really good. So I totally recommend it. But I saw it in 2D. So, yep, that's all I got to say this video. So stay tuned. Maybe on July 5th, I'll give a review of the sneak peek of the Robots in the Skies TV show. See ya!